Have you been diagnosed with depression and struggle with sadness? Maybe you're scared of being criticized. Loss of interest. Aches and pain. I'm always thinking something terrible. Ask your doctor happen. about effects or exile. Ask your doctor about Zimbabwe. Talk to your doctor about Zola. So talk to your healthcare professional. Talk to your doctor Talk today. Your doctor. Tell your doctor. Contact your doctor immediately. Doctor. Talk with your doctor. <laughs> Over 40 years ago, leading psychiatrists met in Puerto Rico to map out their vision of the future. We see a developing potential for nearly a total control of human emotional status, mental functioning, and will to act. Their plan? To create by the year 2000 a range of psychiatric drugs regulating every aspect of human behavior. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, depression and put on Paxil. ADD, and I was prescribed Ritalin. General anxiety disorder. Prescribed Zoloft. Bipolar disorder, and I take lithium. PTSD, Zoloft. I was on Paxil. When they placed me on Zoloft. They gave me Adderall. I was prescribed Sibdimu. Tegretol. Lexapro. Debaco. Stelazine. Adderall. Concerta. Orzine. Prozac. Lorazepam. Epixol. Clonazepam. The Ritalin. Dexafetamine. Paxil. Silert. Prozac. The Adderall. Elevil. Depico, Wilbutrin, Seroquel. Etc. Etc. 100 million people worldwide are on psychiatric drugs. How did this happen? Psychiatrists convinced them they were sick. They want you to think you're diseased from birth, and that all those experiences of life, childhood and adolescence and teenage years and adulthood, and being a senior citizen, that these are all various stages of disease. Because let's face it, we've all been depressed at one time. We've all been anxious at one time. These are normal emotions that we feel. Every emotional and spiritual problem is reduced to a label. And of course, all of those diseases require pharmaceutical treatments. This is big, big business. While generating a healthy income, claiming to be medical professionals, psychiatrists will freely confess that their profession is devoid of science. We don't really have any specific blood tests or other tests that are definitive for any mental illness whatsoever. It would be neat if it would become much more scientific. Well, if you go to my office and you tell me that you're depressed, there's nothing and no blood sample or whatever, no tests. There are not uh, current available tests uh, to verify your diagnosis. I don't use any tests. Do not have a test to say, well, this is this disorder and this is the best medication for this disorder. For many years we thought we had the tests nailed down, but it turned out that they weren't of any value. If you don't know what's causing the symptoms, then to give somebody something to alleviate the symptoms is close to impossible. By the time a drug's approved and it hits the general population, we don't know even 50% of the side effects that are involved with that drug. And these pills cause heart attacks and liver problems and immune system problems and lots of other medical problems. So you're playing with fire. Every day, psychotropic drugs cause serious adverse reactions. And while psychiatrists and drug companies fully understand the dangers of the drugs they sell, their unsuspecting customers are left to suffer the consequences. Everything became worse, Every, uh, you know, each, each mood swing was worse. He would have chronic headaches, chronic, you know, nausea, not feeling good. She was very agitated, uh, very, very jumpy. She was having horrible hallucinations. Her personality was um, disintegrating. Once he started on that drug, he just, the cloud just stayed over him and stayed over him and stayed over him. It got darker and darker. He thought there wasn't anything worth living to kill himself. That was not Matthew. That was the drugs. At least I would like to have said, I love you. I didn't get a chance to do that. In addition to crippling scores of people daily, every month, psychiatric drugs kill an estimated 3,000. But the human devastation would never have gotten this high if psychiatrists hadn't worked hand-in-hand -hand with drug companies to promote their drugs to doctors throughout the world. Today, 70% of all psychiatric drugs are prescribed by general physicians. And how was this accomplished? Marketing. It's about creating a good story that uses science that convinces a physician 
to think about writing a prescription. This is not science. This is incredibly effective marketing. It has nothing to do with science. They use what I call statistical contortionism. Basically just skew the numbers, make everything look fantastic. You hide the bad numbers. They're learning every trick in the book. They're evolving into efficient marketing machines. And it's working. There's definitely an unholy alliance between psychiatry and pharmaceutical sales. That's a marriage made in heaven. They're like conjoined twins. They're joined at the wallet. And with 374 mental disorders filling psychiatry's diagnostic manual and more on the way, business is booming. Pharmaceutical companies have expanded their roster of psychotropic drugs from 44 in 1966 to 174 today. The top five psychotropic drugs combined gross more money than the gross national product of each of over half the countries on earth. Altogether, the psychiatric industry rakes in a third of a trillion dollars a year. How could this have happened? It's a tale of deception that may be difficult to believe, but fatal to ignore. We took him to a psychiatrist, and within a matter of minutes, yeah, she's ADHD, and here's your drug. Went on the Medicaid, and five minutes later, he was on Zyprexa. He saw the psychiatrist who prescribed the medicine for 20 minutes. The guy didn't even look at her. He talked to her a little bit. Now, how can you tell if somebody's ADHD or not ADHD from just a few minutes talking to her? Next thing I know, I'm getting handed a, a handful of Xanax. That's how easy it is to get these drugs. Just so easy, it's just passed to me like candy. That's simple. If a person were to walk in off the street, sat down with a psychiatrist, the chances of him being prescribed a drug before he were to leave the office, I would have to put it at 100%. Psychiatrists prescribe drugs. They might have different ways of diagnosing, they might have different ways of interacting with a patient, but it's rare to find a psychiatrist that uses no drugs. The psychiatrists today are, in quotes, admitting they can't cure these mental illnesses and they're therefore going to manage your illness by using a drug. 50 years ago, a person who was going through a divorce would have relied on family, friends, clergy, and even the family doctor to a certain extent for conversation to work through the issue. They certainly wouldn't have been medicated. That was before the era of psychotropic drugs. Psychiatrists, occupying the lowest rung of the medical profession, worked almost exclusively in mental institutions. With no cures, there was little chance they would ever be respected by the public and their peers as real doctors. Psychiatrists had for years been on the fringe of medicine. Typically, the standard doctor internist would have very low regard for psychiatrists because it was understood not to be a very clear uh, science or art. Psychiatrists wanted to be viewed as physicians, as doctors. And in order to be viewed as physicians and doctors, the people they dealt with had to be viewed as patients. And if doctors dealt with diseases, then their patients had to be diseased. Psychiatrists had a wonderful opportunity, they felt, to become respected in the eyes of their peers. They raced to create a whole diagnostic book called the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which was created by consensus. A group of psychologists and psychiatrists get together and if they have made common observations, they have a vote and they now classify a new disease. And they give it a number and it graduates into the DSM classification. And it's a dangerous book. It's a book that has many disorders that could apply to any one of us because the disorders are not real medical diseases. And it's things that apply to nearly all of us at times. Are you afraid of meeting new people? Are you afraid to speak in front of a large crowd of people? Uh, does it make you nervous to go and to talk to your boss about a complaint? You can invent a mental disorder based on a checklist of symptoms, and that is exactly how the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the billing bible for psychiatry, works. Since the DSM's first edition in 1952, the number of diagnoses has steadily grown. 
from a slender 130-page booklet listing 106 so-called mental disorders, the DSM has bloated 